Hey there guys, uh, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gil and uh, in this video we're going to be talking about confidence interval. Right. So I suppose you've already watched the previous videos in which we talked about the least square estimators and uh, uh, you know all those uh, you know econ basic econometrics videos. Now in this video we're going to be talking about now you know from now on we're going to be talking about the hypothesis testing and interval estimation. So whenever that, whenever interval estimation comes in mind, we talk about confidence interval. Well, again, I would like to start with that example which we used all the time. Is let's suppose we want to determine the wages level of a particular population. Let's suppose we have a sample. Uh, we take out a sample from this population and we want to find out the wages level with the education level. And using the regression analysis, what do we do is we kind of uh, create a line, you know, form a line, and uh, we get a kind of an equation, right? Like, it's, let's suppose y is equal to alpha plus uh, beta hat into xi plus the error term, right? And what do we want? Our objective is that this beta hat should actually be as close as possible to the actual population parameter. Now, let's suppose we run the regression analysis and uh, somehow we get the value of beta hat to be, let's say, 0.72, right? Somehow we get this value, let's suppose 0.7236. So let's suppose this is the value that we get. And what's the meaning of this value? That means that, uh, you know, what is going to be the change in the uh, wages level if I change the education level, right? So that's what it represents. But the most important part is for you to understand that how reliable is this is, right? So how reliable is this uh, value of beta hat is there? How close is it to the actual population parameter? Now, as you know, there are a lot of reasons from which uh, the reliability can actually be a problem. You know, the reasons like there can be a lot of sampling fl fluctuations. You know, there can be a lot of sampling fluctuations because of which the true value uh, of the of the populate of the beta hat will, will not be equal to the beta hat that we are actually going to get, right? And uh, again, if we keep on performing repeated sampling, if we keep on uh, increasing the sample size, we know that uh, the expected value of the beta hat it's gonna be actually equal to the actual population parameter. Right. So for that, what we need to do is something that we've already done in the previous videos, that we need to take a lot of samples out of this. Right. Once we take a lot of samples, the more the samples we take out of this, the more close we go to the actual value of the population parameter. Right. So how do we measure the reliability? Right. So how do we, so this is actually a point estimator. What do we call this? This is actually a point estimator. We're giving you the exact value, right? And the reliability of the point estimator is actually measured. So its reliability is actually measured by standard standard error, which again, we did, we did in the previous video. It's me measured by the standard error. Right. So instead of relying on the point estimate, what we can actually do is we can actually construct uh, an interval. Right. So what we can do is instead of relying on a point estimate, instead of relying on this, what we can do is we can actually construct a kind of an interval. Right. So what will be that interval? You know, how are we going to construct that interval? So we're going to say, okay, we have the value of standard error. So we're going to say uh, the population of beta hat, let's say it's, uh, you know, the population of beta hat, let's suppose this is uh, kind of uh, three times standard error less and it's going to be three times standard errors more. So the actual value of beta is actually going to be in between these two values. So it's we're, what we're doing over here is we're actually constructing an interval and uh, this over here is known as interval estimation. So instead of relying on the point value, what do we do is we actually rely on uh, interval, uh, interval estimation. So what do we do here? You know, let's be more specific here. Now over here, uh, you know, what do we do is we actually try to find out how close, so this is our objective, how close 
uh, is our actual beta hat to the beta population. This is what we're planning to find out. So what we do is we actually as we find out two positive numbers. So this and this where alpha is actually between 0 and 1. Right. So we'll, we'll come on more on that. What is this and what is that? Now, what we have to do is we have to find, uh, you know, what we, what we find is we find the probability that uh, the random interval. So what do we do is we find the probability that the random interval. So I'm writing it down so that, you know, you understand it. So the probability that the random interval. Now, what is a random interval? That is beta hat minus this. And beta hat plus this, right? So this is a number, you know, kind of which relates to the standard error. So the probability that this random interval contains, so it contains the actual population parameter is 1 minus alpha, where alpha is actually between 0 and 1. Right. So what do you mean by that? You know, mathematically, if we were to put it uh, there, so mathematically, uh, we try to the, the confidence interval is that probability that beta 2, the uh, beta hat uh, is actually between these values. The actual, actual population parameter is actually between these values is actually equal to min minus alpha. Now this is something what we call as the confidence interval. Now let's understand more about this, right? So let's let's just put it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write it down again. So the probability that uh, you know our actual population parameter is between these two values, uh, it's actually equal to one minus alpha. Right now, uh, so this is something what we know as confidence interval, and what is one minus alpha? This is something which is known as the confidence coefficient. So this is something which is known as the confidence coefficient. Right. So let me just draw a line here like that. Right. Okay. Now this is something which is known as confidence uh, coefficient, and uh, the value of alpha. Right, so you know, one minus uh, one minus alpha is confidence coefficient, and alpha, which is actually between zero and one, is known as the level of significance. Right, we'll talk more on that. Just uh, you know, defining all the terms. Right, and the endpoints uh, are known as the confidence limits. So the endpoints that is beta. So I'm just going to write down beta, beta hat minus this. And beta hat plus this, this is something which is which are known as your confidence limits, right? So these are something which are known as confidence limits, and they're also known as you know, you can even call them as critical values because these are the values in between which your actual population parameter is going to be there. Now, this part over here is known as the lower confidence limit, so this part over here is known as the lower confidence limit. And uh, this part over here is known as the upper confidence limit, right? So that is what you know. It's very important to know that because in the future videos we're going to be referring to these uh, these parts over here. So if I say and then usually what happens is the value of alpha and the value of one minus alpha. Uh, are actually represented in terms of percentage. So you want to refer, uh, represent them in terms of percentages. So this is how you're going to represent. You're going to represent this as 100 A, 100 alpha, and you're going to represent this as 100 1 minus alpha. Right? So this is how you represent them in terms of percentage. Right? So now let's actually take an example. Let's suppose that the value of alpha, let's suppose that the value of alpha is actually 0 0.05. Or the, that is also equal to 5% because that is 100 into alpha. What do you mean by that? You know, when the value of 100 alpha is 5%, that means this over here is 5%. Then what is going to be 100 into 1 minus alpha? That is actually going to be equal to 95%. Or, you know, the value of 1 minus alpha is going to be equal to 0 0.95. So what's the meaning of that? So that means that the probability that the interval shown 
there includes the true population parameter is 95%. So the probability that the value of that the value of uh, a beta hat, right? Sorry, the beta population is between these two intervals. Is between these two intervals is actually equal to 95%, right? So what happens is the interval estimator gives us the range of values in which the beta population might lie, right? So I suppose you're understanding the meaning of these confidence intervals. So this is the basic of confidence confidence intervals. We're not right now. We're not doing the confidence intervals for regression coefficients, which we're going to do later. So let's actually understand some of the important aspects uh, which we need to know. Let's understand some of the important aspects which we need to know about the pop about the interval estimation, right? So let's understand some of the important aspects, right? So I'm writing it down here because, you know, so that you know, I don't go too fast and, you know, you guys understand what I'm saying here. So again, the first important point, don't, so there is a lot of a misunderstanding when it comes to, uh, you know, this confidence interval. Now, this confidence interval does not mean that the probability of beta 2, so the probability of beta population lying between these intervals is 95%. That is not correct. That is not what the, uh, you know, that is not what we, we're trying to do here because beta population is a fixed value. How can we say that the probability that will lie within these range is 95%? What do we mean by confidence interval is that the probability, so this probability right here, this probability right here, what do we mean by this probability? It's the probability of constructing. So when I say the probability is 95%, what do you mean by that? That means there's a 95% chance of me constructing an interval, so constructing an interval that contains beta population, right? That contains the value of beta population. And the probability is 1 minus alpha. So we are not saying that the probability that beta population is going to lie within our range is 95%. But we mean to say that whatever range we create, the probability of that coming between uh, closer to the value of beta population is 95%. So it's actually the other way around, right? So I suppose you're understanding this point here. Another thing uh, that the value of beta hat is, uh, it's actually something which is random, right? Random and it differs for each sample. So it differs from sample to sample, which means since it differs from sample to sample, the probability is also going to differ from sample to sample. So our confidence interval is also going to differ from sample to sample, right? So this is again, uh, you have to understand this, uh, you know, so. Again, since the confidence intervals are random, since confidence intervals are random, uh, the more, so you, you should also take this in, in kind of a long run sense. When I say long run sense, that is the more samples that you take, the more samples that you take, the probability of your, of your, the value of beta hat, uh, coming under the beta population is gonna be, uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, under your confidence interval, right? So you should not rely on just few samples. So if I say the confidence interval is 95%, so it should, so the more samples that you have, the better it is for you, right? Because since, uh, you know, the confidence interval is a random value, so more samples that you take, the better probability or the better value for alpha is what you get. Another important point, which is one of the most important points, that is when the value, it's when the value of the beta hat is known, right? So when you actually know the value of beta hat, then this confidence interval vanishes. Why? Because beta population is something which is fixed. And when the value of beta hat is known, the probability is of your interval, the probability of uh, beta hat to lie between this interval, uh, it's actually equal to either one or it's zero because once you know the value of beta hat, either your beta population is going to lie between uh, these two 
inter the, this interval or is that going to lie between this interval so that means we cannot make a probabilistic statement like that so you know we won't be able to say that the probability is 1 minus a uh, you know given that the fixed interval beta population is actually between this uh, fixed interval right so because the intervals are fixed now so the probability is either 1 or it's 0 right so so there are two things uh, you know what you can do when you have a sample either you calculate the value of you, you calculate the value of uh, beta hat you know which is actually a difficult task or you construct confidence intervals so either you do this or you do that and you've seen this in the previous videos and we know that this is kind of a hard nut to crack this is kind of a hard thing to do so it would be easier for us to uh, you know to construct a confidence intervals right so that is what the whole uh, you know the whole uh, concept of conf confidence interval is all about so suppose you're understanding this point over here guys so thank you very much for watching this video and uh, in the next video we're going to be talking about how to construct the confidence intervals for regression coefficients right so in the next video we're going to be constructing uh, confidence intervals for regression coefficients so i suppose you'll be watching that video right so thank you very much for watching this video this is our uh, website that is perfect-scores.com that is our facebook page to give us your valuable like and this would be our email address to give us your valuable feedback so thank you very much guys don't forget to share and i'll see you in the next video